I think the name Rocket Mass Heater is kind of boring. So I came up with my own name that I think is a lot more interesting. I call it the Nautilus. The ultra high efficiency mass based thermal storage with chambered combustion for internal energy dissipation causing time released electromagnetic radiation and conduction heating system. Or you could just call it the Nautilus heater, but I like my name better. <laughs> Super fast public service announcement. If you're not one of my Patreon supporters, but you've thought about it in the past, I destroyed the monetary tier levels that Patreon tells you to make. The reason I did this is because someone giving me $1 might be a bigger percentage of their expendable income than someone giving me $5. And if they're so much of a fan of the channel that they're willing to give me a dollar to help me succeed at doing this YouTube thing, I felt they should have access to the exclusive content that I put on Patreon. So I took away the tiers and now it's just a dollar to support me on Patreon. So big thanks to all the Patreon supporters that are over there already enjoying the exclusive content. And thanks to all the people especially that upped their pledge after I lowered the barrier to entry to get into only a dollar. My patrons are awesome. Also a big thanks to my new patrons and the OGs that have been there for a while. You guys really are keeping this thing alive. I've got more making fun of hippies videos coming very soon. Back to the video. In the last video, I talked about how this steel is going to deteriorate rapidly if it's exposed to very high temperatures. I got castable refractory cement for making your own fire brick shapes. This will handle the temperature, and that means even if the steel gets destroyed, I'll still have the same shape chamber, just won't have any metal in it. So I'm going to build fire bricks on the outside of this. So the idea here is to take masking tape to create the separations between the different brick pieces so that the expansion and contraction of the steel when this warms up and cools down doesn't break the whole thing apart. Think sidewalks, you'll know that there's cracks in the sidewalks. That's for expansion and contraction of the concrete. That crack is just a groove that they put in the top of the sidewalk and it creates a stress concentration at that point. That's where it cracks. They can control what happens with the concrete by just putting a little stress concentration right there. And the tape will act as a guide so that I know approximately how thick my bricks are. And the masking tape is thin and it'll burn out easy. This won't be perfectly sealed, but it'll be completely surrounded with more media. This is kind of guesswork, but I feel like this is the best option. It's better than just leaving this metal and fire bricks are really expensive. 40 bucks for six of them, but they won't even fit around the shape that I made and it would be difficult to make a complex shape with them. By volume, they're cheaper than this but I would still need a mortar to bind them together and I would have to chop them up like crazy to try to get them to fit my shape. Just thought about it and realized I should take my own advice. The groove thing, the reason they do that is so that that crack is super tight and you don't get uh, grass growing out of concrete. Once you get plants growing through separations in concrete, that's when it starts to really break it apart. This I don't need to worry about grass growing out of it, obviously. There's no point in making complete separations between this stuff. When it expands and cracks and then goes back together, I'll get a really nice seal if there was no paint there anyway. So. I'll not paint, tape. That's given that the steel even burns out. I mean, until the steel is gone, this castable fire brick will be a better insulator than the other stuff I'm gonna put around it. Because this section of my heater contains the burn chamber, it should be as insulated as possible. All these videos that are out there for rocket mass heaters, they're saying that you need super high temperatures for it to be crazy efficient. Well, it's not bad to have a super high temperature, except for the fact that you can't use steel. The minimum temperature necessary to combust everything that is in wood completely is 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. At 1200 degrees, Degrees, you guarantee complete combustion and you won't even have smoke. So yes, my heater needs to be well insulated, but you don't have to hit 2,500 degrees like they say. 1,200 is good enough. I made too much, but I gotta get it used up before it sets up. This has to be done in stages, and I wasn't thinking. Aha! Uh -huh. Now I wait and do this on the rest of it. So here's the deal. The bricks are cast on both sides of what I now lovingly refer to as the Nautilus design. But this stuff says that it has a working time of 20 minutes, so I figured in an hour it would be hard set and it would be fine. But that is not the case. It's still gooey and squishy enough that I'm afraid to lift it up without the bricks falling off. I got it flipped, but I waited a really long time before I did that. I wasn't sure how to do the sides, so I built this ridiculous form for the outside. I have the brick separations cardboard form on the outside, a used spray paint can. I have this stuff set up. All of this is because that refractory castable cement is, well, it's not cheap. And now that everything is cobbled together out of garbage, cast the bricks on the outside and let this thing sit until it's fully set up. The second side I mixed with warm water so that it would set up faster. And it did set up faster, but it's still, it's still squishy. I mean, it's starting to get 
stiff, but obviously at this point I'm frustrated. Time to try to get things accomplished instead of worrying about it. Good enough for now. Not too shabby for garbage. It's the next day, and obviously I removed the form, which was made out of all that junk, but it worked really well. I assumed that it would be roughly an hour for it to set hard, and that was way off. I thought three hours would be hard, but it took a day. I wrapped the whole thing with shrink wrap, or saran wrap. That way I could seal the water in and get it warm without it drying out, because it's not supposed to dry out for at least 24 hours. So before I closed off the holes, on this thing here and here I wrapped the whole thing in saran wrap and I ran the heat gun through it to warm up the entire block to make it set faster which only took about three or four hours to make it warm enough that it was gonna set up at a reasonable pace and I used warm water to mix it it's really heavy probably weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of I'd say 80 pounds it's not impossible to move but I have to be really careful that I don't jostle it too hard because some of the bricks could potentially fall off maybe at this point still so Nothing fell off. Six and a half. Four. But I gotta worry about this thing too. I've never laid bricks before. This might be interesting. Obviously, you get the point. You build a brick thing around, you fill it with mass, sand, and stone. This is gonna take a long time. That burn chamber is insulated by the fire bricks that I cast on the outside of it, and the fill material that I'm putting around it is extra mass to store thermal energy. I would just dig up dirt and use that, but the ground has been frozen and is frozen now, and it would take forever, and gravel and sand are relatively inexpensive. The reason I'm using the combination of the two mixed together is so that I can get as much mass into a small area as possible, plus sand is more expensive, it's like five bucks a bag, and you can get gravel for like 250, three bucks a bag? So, makes it more cost effective and there's no air pockets. Air is a great insulator, but it has next to no thermal mass at all compared to stone. Time to do the casting around this thing. Couldn't find any more refractory castable cement like I used before, but I did find fire clay. So I got some perlite also, and I'm gonna do it the way the hippies do. Mix the fire clay and perlite, and then form it around this. And then I'll slide my form up and fill in with the sand and gravel on the outside until I get to, yeah, right there. I found some numbers for the thermal conductivity of the stuff that I'm using to make this heater. The lower the number, the worse the material conducts heat. The higher the number, the better it conducts heat. Air is 0 0.026. Sand is 0 0.25. Concrete is 0.4 to 0.7. Gravel is 0.7. Brick is 0 0.6 to 1. Granite is 1.7 to 4. Steel is 43. And aluminum is 205. Those numbers represent the thermal conductivity of those materials. But conduction is only one way that energy can be transferred. There's also convection and radiation. Come on. Well, that works not at all. I just gotta do that over and over until I reach that part. There it is, good to go. 
Well, I need a lot more than that. This takes forever to mix. Time for this thing. this part, that way I don't fill it up inside with this stuff. Well, there's that. Time for the old helium tank. I'm gonna see how far this is from the chimney thing in there. Make sure I have enough space for good flow. All right, so this is 11 and a quarter. It's nine and a quarter. So I got two inches ish of clearance. That should be absolutely, that should be plenty. This area is two. Oh, what's the circumference? 18 square inches of area. So the, this is seven. So two inches is more than enough. That'll be perfectly fine. If you can conduct heat or radiate heat, that is the most efficient way to warm a space. Because if you heat up air, air has very poor conductivity so even if the air is warm it takes forever to warm everything else up but conducting heat and radiating heat are very easy with a rocket mass heater your super hot exhaust gas comes up out of this part transfers its thermal energy into this steel body and they say that that part radiates the heat into your space this also conducts energy into the air and warms it and it convects and flows up over it but that doesn't put much heat in the room it's mostly the radiation off of this, but the thing is, everything that gets warm produces radiant heat or radiation or electromagnetic radiation. All of it's actually just light. It's whether you can see it or not. Everything above absolute zero or zero Kelvin produces some level of electromagnetic radiation, which is how you can cool that exhaust gas very quickly when it hits this piece of steel because it radiates a lot of electromagnetic energy off as radiant heat that it has absorbed from the energy within the exhaust gas. But so does the rest of the heater. It just doesn't make as much because it's not as hot. You know the temperature level makes a difference in how much electromagnetic radiation or light is created because a hot fire makes more light than a cold one. Just think about a campfire versus a welding arc. You can look at a campfire, but if you look at a welding arc, it gives you sunburn on your retinas. But this design has a relatively large contact area with the concrete floor, so it's able to conduct a fair amount of heat into the concrete floor, which is the reason it's so difficult to make it warm out here in my shop. But with this, it won't anymore. Well, there's that part. Now I need to do that part. That's it for this one. Had to split this video into two parts because building these two things took forever. So next time you get to see me make that, which has a huge amount of science inside of it and it took forever because of that. So Patreon link in the description and sub and all that. I'll see you next time. The Nautilus. The ultra high efficiency. The ultra high efficiency. Oh man. Okay, here we go. The ultra. Ah, it was even worse that time. Ultra high energy dissipation thermal storage <laughs> chambered combustion this is it this is it I like my name better finally <laughs>